What's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 2017 mod career mode with Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari car. We're here for episode number 18 today, the Brazilian Grand Prix, the second last round of the season today, round number 19. Obviously, if, you, if you're wondering, I saw a few people confused about the episode numbers last time out. It's because we did have that double episode earlier on in the series, but we're here for the Brazilian Grand Prix. You can see pole position in qualifying. Very, very close stuff, actually, if you look on the right-hand side between me and Sebastian Vettel, but then after Vettel, Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I think we've got a very, very good pace as a collective team as Ferrari over the grid for this weekend at the Brazilian Grand Prix. And surprising to see Daniel Ricciardo out qualifying the two Mercedes cars. So he's done very, very well. And that may be something we have to contend with in the race. Don't know. It's, it's going to be very much dependent on our start. But obviously, we've done the best job we can on the Saturday to get it on pole. And now we just try and do the job. Obviously, it's uh, from last episode, it's a 10 point gap between me and Sebastian. So, you know, it's well, it well and truly is crunch time now to just get the, do uh, get the job done. And Hopefully, hopefully just uh, get through with uh, more points than Vettel going to the finale, really. So we go through, we set our eyes on those five red lights. For the second last time this season for the Brazilian Grand Prix, fire lights are out and we're underway from pole position. It's a pretty mediocre start from us, actually, as we get away and bog down a little bit in second gear. But a short run to turn one round the outside, leaving some room on the inside if anyone is going to make a dive bomb there. But it doesn't look like it. So we're still in P1 then, thankfully, through the center S. Then Ricardo is in P2, actually. So he's got the jump on Sebastian. Vettel, so just like I said, he qualified P3 amazingly ahead of the two Mercedes cars. Now, will he be a threat in this Grand Prix as we go into Sector 2? It's myself, then Ricardo, Sebastian Vettel, then followed by the two Mercedes cars going side by side there. I think it may be Lewis Hamilton ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Moving on, though, to lap 3 then. Nothing happened on lap 2, but lap 3, Ricardo now finally trying to make a move, perhaps, around the outside. I go defensive to the inside. That works out for us, so pretty easy to defend for him. Then, you can see the entire top 5 bunching up quite a bit, and surprising to not see Max Verstappen anywhere. Well, obviously Verstappen at the moment is leading Ricardo in the championship in terms of the standing so surprising to see only Ricardo there as the lone Red Bull uh, kind of uh, getting his elbows out in the top five really amongst the two Ferrari cars ourselves and the two Mercedes cars but now as we move later on to the Grand Prix lap five Ricardo right on the back of his lap four I should say actually sorry as Ricardo now makes a move to the left hand side Will Vettel ooh, try and dart around it's going to be three wide into the next corner very very close stuff we managed to just break later than both of them and get back into P1 but that means now Sebastian can go around the outside of Ricardo, so technically I almost helped uh, Vettel kind of there because I, I fended off Ricardo, pinched him into the apex to the inside. He got the tighter line and that allowed Vettel to swoop around the outside and now down the inside into the heart of Sector 2 in the uh, winding hilly section of Brazil here. And he's up into P2 now. It's a 1 2 for Ferrari and it's all and it's an all too familiar sight really from a lot, of the, a lot of the races this season. But now we move on up the hill on towards now, finally onto lap 5 this time. And uh, Vettel is going to be in our slipstream. He's going to pull to the left hand side. We're going to go to the right because I'm going to try and get the inside line for the next corner if we can breaking round the outside but obviously as I just said this is going to turn to the inside for this next corner so we'll get that tight line though so Vettel may be able to get a better run let's see down this back straight he'll have DRS obviously at this point now being activated after lap two so here he goes to the inside Ricardo's going to try and follow him I think it may be three wide just about I can't really see in my mirrors quite clearly but we go side by side with Sebastian on the exit it's so so close I nearly slam my left front tyre into his little Operate on the uh, edge of the side pod there as we go side by side up the hill now. Ricardo's nose to tell with us as well. So if me and Vettel kind of if we if make if we make any mistakes or contact, Ricardo and potentially the two Mercedes cars are right there for the taking to kind of capitalise on that mistake. But as we move on to lap six, as Vettel is coming back at us for a second time now in this Grand Prix, you see in the top left, Ricardo now has made a pit stop. He's not in P3 anymore. It's Hamilton now up in P3 as he overtakes Bottas behind us. And as we go side by side once again in the same section, so so close once again. Our left front tire getting so close to that Ray-Ban logo on the side pod of Sebastian Vettel's car. But Ricardo, once again, like we've seen so many times this season, the Red Bull cars have such poor tire wear, actually. Uh, you know, I, to speak of poor tire wear, it was quite surprising, actually, because obviously last time out in Mexico, we had quite poor tire wear. But to say that, the Red Bulls have much worse tire wear. And time and time again this season, they've pitted a lot earlier than everyone else uh, in the top flight. And once again, that's no kind of a uh, difference. So Ricardo already pit on, like, 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 I think lap five, I think that was. So Ricardo very, very early, whereas we are gone to lap nine. You saw on the on the top right there. Me and Vettel have both gone to lap nine. I think the Mercedes cars pitted even earlier than us. They pitted lap seven. So both me and Vettel really basically pushed each other and our car seemingly has pretty damn good tyre wear right now at the Brazilian Grand Prix. We strap on a set of medium tyres and that should be our first of two pit stops this afternoon hopefully. We can do a two stop hopefully as we've got 26 laps left 
after the Grand Prix. So if I can maybe just about kind of do 50-50, uh, that'll be the best bet. But we'll have to see if we're going to be fighting and scrapping out with Sebastian. Uh, as you saw on that panning shot as we're entering the pit lane, Vettel was only, I would say, a second behind, less than a second behind. He was within DRS still, and he was still fighting me. And both of us were kind of pushing each other, which I think kind of worked out for us. The fact that both of us were in one and two. We were attacking each other so hard. I was trying to defend. He was trying to attack that we both kind of pushed each other to go this long on the soft tyres up till lap nine. Whereas the Mercedes guys went till only about lap seven, as I said, and Ricardo much earlier. So now we moved on to lap 10. This is about a lap after our outlap. We're chasing down Kevin Mangson at the moment. We're in P5. Hamilton is behind us on, a, uh, on the same set of medium tyres. So not too much difference in strategy this time. But we make a diving move down the inside. So, so close there to his car. But we hit the apex beautifully. And we're up into P3 now as Vettel will be on our inside there. Actually, you can see that on the mini map and also the proximity arrow. As we look behind us, there is Vettel. He's going to come out just behind Magnussen, unfortunately for him. So he's going to have to do an overtake move on Magnussen as well. But we're ahead of Vettel still. So the overcut that has worked quite well for Vettel in uh, races gone by has not worked as well this time for him. But now we're taking a look at a replay of Valtteri Bottas and we're taking a bit of a breather from this race right now because we're going to have a look at what happened to Bottas because at the moment he is completely out of this race now. So what happens is he has a pit stop. He's strapped on another set of soft tyres. So that's two sets of soft compounds. Going down the pit lane, all jolly, but no, wait, hang on. He thinks, no, I, I, sh I shouldn't have put on the soft tyres. Hamilton's put on mediums. The Ferrari's put on mediums. So he drives back down the pit lane, turns back around in two seconds flat, comes in for another pit stop. His team are having none of it. They don't want to have another pit stop. So they just go back in the garage and he sat there for about 30 seconds riding on board now look, taking another look this is absolutely class driving I don't know how on earth Bottas has done that you can see Fernando Alonso goes past him there in the pit lane one of the strangest sights to see a Mercedes car coming back down the other way for Fernando Alonso um you know obviously he's not going to have too much to do in the race but at least uh, Bottas is providing him some in-race entertainment there in the pit lane so that was very odd and that means Bottas is actually unfortunately for him and for Hamilton and I guess Mercedes as a whole he's completely out of this race now but anyway back to our race and we've got Sebastian Vettel now coming down our inside there's no time to waste here for the commentary we go down the inside side by side with Sebastian Vettel so so close we definitely made some contact there so it's a full-on Ferrari scrap here we make some tire contact I'm forcing him to the right hand side this is personal now between me and Sebastian this is for the advantage going to the finale so it's no more time it's no it's no time for Mr. Nice Guy between me and Sebastian this is hammer and tong stuff so we're taking all we can we're taking as much as we can out of Vettel and the road on ahead of us but right now Vettel gets us back in the uh, swooping hill section of sector two in Brazil so we have to stick behind him and try and maybe make a move I had a look to see maybe I don't know if I could have had the grip to go around the outside here on this left hand are not going to work so at the moment Vettel is into the lead this Grand Prix on lap 19 so we've moved actually quite some way into the Grand Prix nothing really happened for at least like seven laps there after we made our pit stop phases unfortunately for us but the entire time Vettel was catching us and closing that tiny few second gaps he did have to us after the initial first pit stop but now back on towards lap 20 we're going to make a re-overtaking move down the inside we've had DRS obviously up the hill and we can swing across into the apex we've already taken the move there up back into P1 but then two laps later lap 22 now as we go on to Vettel's back for more right up our gearbox in the mirror as you can see we defend to the inside he's unable to get enough speed to dive down the inside there so for now we stay in P1 but he's going to have yet again a really great drive the AI seem to have such a good drive off this third corner on the left hand side again Vettel tries it with DRS on the left hand side this time we're not going to opt for the inside line because that's too tight of a line to take this time around lap 22 so we try to go around the outside but we lose the back end a little bit on the curving there just got on the curving tried to plot on the power there so we have to go opposite lock to catch the car so now can we maybe try it though up the hill maybe try and feed the car in no Vettel swings across maybe on the inside there we've lost the car a little bit lost the momentum the back end went a little bit but we actually kind of uh, powered through it and kind of took the slide with us and nearly tried to make a move down the inside, but it's not going to work out there on the left-hander. But then again, second time of asking down the inside, and this time it will work. You can see, though, on the right-hand side, our tyres are really going off. The front left on 77%. So, so this is exactly what I was mentioning earlier, was the fact that because we're fighting with Vettel, we may not be able to do this 15-50 from what was lap 10, uh, pretty much 26 laps to go. We can't split that evenly, 13 laps apiece, because we've been fighting with Vettel. That's been wearing out our tyres a lot more than we'd want to. So now we come in probably one lap earlier than I would have liked to, but that, would, that shouldn't be so, too bad. So we're going to come in. We're in second place now, obviously, and uh, looking at the mini map, there's quite a big gap ahead of us. So we actually may come out
out in some really good clean air. So, strap on the set of medium tyres. It's a uh, pretty mediocre pit stop, actually, considering the pit stops we had in recent races, actually. Some of you guys were very, very surprised with the one the pit stops we made at Mexico, actually. It was like a 1.7 or something like that. Um, so, the Ferrari guys have been on it throughout the season. I can remember Singapore was also a good one, but uh, that, was a, that one was pretty mediocre in comparison. But now, as we come out the pit, as Vettel comes out the pit lane, rather, you can see he is actually well ahead of us now, down the straight. He's actually already gone through the corner as we eventually make that corner left-hand side. So Vettel has really, really stepped up the pace on his outlap. But, but crucially, you can see on the top left, he is on soft tyres. And now, crucially, he's getting held up by Marcus Ericsson. So once again, for a second time in a row, the Sauber cars are getting in the way and not really obeying blue flags brilliantly there. But Vettel is on soft tyres, and he is no way taking those to the end. So Vettel is making another stop in this race, whereas I want to try and go to the end. We should be able to go to the end. You know, the strategy from the start, the engineer has been recommending soft two medium sets of tyres. And in, th in theory, it should work as uh, we pretty much split 12 to 13 laps with his last stint. So this should work out for us. So we move on to lap 27 and Vettel's still yet to pit. So can we actually make this move even before Vettel makes a pit stop? At the moment, we close through. We've got one of the Force Indies ahead of Vettel for company. So will there be another situation where Blue Flyers comes into it? Don't think so because Vettel goes on the right-hand side, goes around the outside of Ocon and Ocon uh, a bit awkward on the apex. We have to go around the outside side by side with him. He's on our inside there. So very, very unfortunate. Lost a tiny bit of time there. So we're going to have to try and close up to Vettel now through sector two. I can see another car. So I think maybe these lap cars may be a bit of a blessing in disguise, perhaps, if this Sauber works to our advantage with the Force India. Obviously did not, but it's another Sauber, and it's going to be potentially the same corner, actually, as it was with Ericsson. This time it's going to be Pascal Berline, and he held him up so much there. Vettel has to break, and, uh, break check himself pretty much behind the Sauber car, and so we swoop through around the outside of Vettel, trying to hang around the outside, keeping the foot planted. Doesn't work out on the outside. We dive down the inside, though. A little bit of tyre uh, contact made, a little bit of tyre rubbing. Uh, Vettel gets it round the outside, up the hill now. So we're still in P2, but we're so much closer now. And that Sauber really did help us out so much. So we open the DRS now as we go on to lap 28, round the outside, and we're going to get up into P1. And now we can try and bolt away. But of course, through this next corner, through the third turn on this left-hander, once again, Vettel is going to get that good drive. I said it the, ent the entire race. The AI just gets such a good drive off that corner. Obviously, DRS wide open at this point as well. So now he's going to swoop round the outside. We're going to defend to the inside line. We're going to try our best to try and squeeze him out if we can. I can't really see where he's, to, apart from just his wheel peering off on the distance there. A little bit of tyre contact once again. He's got the advantage up the hill, so we're going to break a little bit earlier, try and suss out a line to cut to the inside base. You do a bit of a switch back on the racing line. Down the inside, once again, the same place that we tried previously in the Grand Prix. We're on the outside line try and feed it through in third gear we're going to get the traction we're going to plant the power and we're back up into first place so at the moment just really lap after lap at the moment defending from Vettel of course this entire time really in reality obviously at the time I wasn't thinking this but in reality this is probably helping Vettel out because he's wearing out my tyres and obviously either way he's making a pit stop so we move on now towards lap 29 still fighting Vettel at this stage in hindsight I probably should have stopped fighting him and just concentrate on my tyre wear but I just want to try and fight him basically try and keep ahead on track keep track position so once again he's down my inside he's squeezed us out actually quite well there Vettel so he's up into P1 but now we suss it out maybe try and go round the outside in fifth gear find the traction round the outside he's just about going to leave us the room we're off track a little bit but now is he going to leave us the room or will he pinch us at the apex no he will not he'll leave us the room there so can we try and once again find the traction in fourth or fifth gear no not going to work and Vettel is going to hang it up in first place but he's been caught napping on the exit of that corner he's been very very poor out of that traction so and we're going to squeeze him very aggressively off circuit pretty much almost just try and cut him off at the racing line and up the hill look at that nose to tell he's got he's got the traction up the hill now so will he try and make a move I don't know at some point he's got a pit obviously for that another set of soft tyres I would imagine and there he goes he goes into the pit so now pretty much it's time for us to keep it calm and collected and now we try and take these tyres to the end of the Grand Prix we've got six laps to go for this race but at the moment as we move on to the last lap of the Grand Prix there is a 17 second gap to Sebastian Metal in second place but our tyres are very very warm we're at 79% so I've been pretty much uh, taking it very very easy in these last two laps just you know uh, letting the car roll through the corners just kind of very, being very very easy and not really pressurising the tyres too much but now we move on into the 80% region almost with the indicator on the left hand side that's nothing new I mean if you remember back to my driver Spain we were able to finish the race when it was like this but as we move on into the next corner just very very subtly our tyre just pops on the left hand side <laughs> At this point, I 
I'm not even like gutted. I'm just actually laughing back at watching this back. That's happened twice in a row now. I've got a puncher, but these tyres should go to the end. I mean, the strategy even calls for a two-stop on the medium tyres, but no. And now at this point, obviously you guys don't hear this, but at the time of recording this, I was just kind of pushing the wheel along, just kind of going rocking back and forth, just trying to go, come on, get up the hill. And at the moment, we're training about five cars here, and I'm just trying to encourage the car, just keep going, just keep going. We can somehow maybe make it. There was a 17-second gap, for Christ's sake. We can maybe try and still get first place. Eventually, this train does get past, but Vettel also get past there on the line. Such a piss state. It's literally a 7 tenth difference or something like that between me and Vettel. So we almost pulled off the unmanageable of, uh, of going through across the line in first place with a puncher. It wasn't meant to be. Vettel will get first place. It's still ironically a 1-2 for Ferrari. But Vettel will now get, uh, that will be obviously 7 points on us, 18-25. to 25. So going into the finale episode, the last round of the season, he's going to have a 3-point gap behind us to the championship. So that will mean though, it is an all-out scrap at Abu Dhabi. So it's good in that sense, but also it's a little bit, you know, shrug the collar moment. 3 points is the difference. So if he does win that race and I come second again, he wins the championship. So it is going to go down to the finale. Uh, in the constructors though, some of you guys pointed out actually last time out in Mexico, we actually won the constructors. I, I just didn't know. It's been, it's been such a dominance by Ferrari this season that I just honestly didn't actually uh, realize that. So we have actually already won the constructors, but yeah, what a race. But again, just as I said, at that point, uh, looking back at this now in Brazil, I'm not even like annoyed or gutted. I'm just actually laughing back at myself that it's, it's happened twice now. Um, but that time, I honestly really did think I could have done it. At Mexico, it was a big ask because we had two laps left. That time, we had half a lap left. We're at 80%. And if I remember back to my driver, Spain, in Season 5, we were on 80%. We went to 85% at Spain. And we took those tyres three laps. So I just don't get the logic behind this tyre suddenly just pops as soon as it gets to 80%. It's a bit of a kind of a gamble, really. A bit of potluck. And unfortunately, twice now, got a little bit unlucky there. But anyway, if you did enjoy the video, a lot of scrapping there with Vettel. Really, really uh, fun. And hopefully, it can be another one at Abu Dhabi. But this time, obviously, next time out for Abu Dhabi, it will be for the title, so it'll mean that much more. But if you have enjoyed the episode, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're interested, then do get subscribed for weekly vlog content. I've been Amber. I'm Josh today, and we'll see you guys next time.